Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Recently, a lot of you guys have been happening. Hey, Dr. Daniel, what happened to the bigger farm? When did you disappear? No, 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 I didn't disappear. As I'd already shared with you guys earlier on, I felt like it was a bit less necessary for me to share what happens on the bigger farm because it's a breeder farm. And in all honesty, very few people are less likely to be interested in like doing an actual breeder farm because the dynamics involved in it are quite complicated. Secondly, it's quite huge. It's like 400 acres. And in all reality, you know, inspiration reaches a particular point where you're like is that really possible for me so I thought to myself that maybe sharing the smaller farm would bring a bit more inspiration to people and it feels more realistic and practical but well in today's video we are back to the breeder farm as you can see this is one of our chicken houses I mean I'll just show you guys the grand scale of the chicken house I mean that's the chicken house it starts from right there you know and we'll move and turn around this is the entire length of the chicken house can you see how far it goes and ends it's a really really huge chicken house it's over 100 meters in length yeah it's about i think 180 meters in length and it measures about 15 meters in width and as you can see the walls are quite high well i don't know if you'd call them walls but they are sides yeah they are quite high really really high i mean it's about maybe 10 12 feet to the top it's really really high with my height i'm not even half the length of the chicken house so this is how you want your chicken houses to be so as you can see the compound is quite well maintained to make sure that we don't have any animals coming in uh to make sure that we don't have rats and things around of course it's impossible to get rid of rats in an environment like this they'll always find crevices and places to hide but we try to make sure that we minimize them all around again you can see the side of the chicken house the wall right here at the bottom is really short you can see how short it is it's probably just a little over a foot yeah and that's just enough and then you can see that we have chain link and wire mesh to prevent small birds and big animals from going inside and then the rest of the side is ventilation to make sure that we have fresh air coming in and the place is well ventilated now in case you're wondering why we don't have chickens here we actually have a new batch of chickens that just came in recently we are breeding it should i go yeah i think i'll show you guys exactly what we are doing if you see the other side we have a bit of tarpaulin on the side of the chicken house let me move over and show you guys exactly what's happening i've cleaned myself up as you might see i'm in my overall i'm actually just from inside there you can see my gumboots they're quite clean yeah i i cleaned myself up so i'm not a biosecurity hazard to the unit so i'll just move in and show you guys exactly what's happening inside there this is our food dip right here so this is what we're going to utilize to get in and as you can see we have tarpaulin on the side i think i'll just move back a little bit but you appreciate it we have tarpaulin on the side it's quite huge tarpaulin as you can imagine it was quite expensive having it running the entire side right here but this is part of the necessity so ideally the way you're supposed to do it is that you need to have the tarpaulin opening from the top to the bottom but it's too high for us to do that and you would need a pulley system so if you want to air it or open for air to come in you need to make sure it's opening from the top to the bottom but we couldn't do it right here so ideally we had to improvise but this is sufficient it's working for now so let's get in and i show you guys exactly what's happening here so once we get in right from here you can see the unit right here this is one of the first units that you get in from so here you can see charcoal that we are using to brood charcoal is coal you guys can see it quite clearly right here it is coal and it's what we're using for heating up the stoves i think we're going to move in and i'll show them to you guys so we've piled quite a number of bags here for our brooding quite a number of bags and they're going to work for us very well and this unit we've also prepared because once the birds get done with the other side we're going to expand towards this side so we've divided it towards the other side as you can see we have our taplings running all the way to the top we have a little bit of room at the top certainly for ventilation to bring in a bit of ventilation but also as you can see if i zoom you can see an iron sheet running over it to the top so it's not like it's direct air coming in yeah so it's good ventilation yeah we're not worried it's going to bring in drafts inside the chicken house then you can see our drinker and feeding system we've tried to raise it off the ground because right now we don't need it these are the feeders they were cleaned but of course before we use them again we'll need to clean them again because dust just comes from everywhere yeah dust comes from everywhere so you can see them again right here we have quite a number of them we've placed down right here and we have litter at the bottom this is our litter at the bottom yeah it's made from wood shavings which i personally believe is one of the best materials you can use for litter this is the boxes where the chicks came from as you can see them we piled them right here so are the chicks were brought from and then let's move in guys let's move in here we have some of the feed that we are giving to the birds 
can see it, it's in terms of pellet. So let's move in, guys. We'll use this entrance. And uh, right here, you can see our brooder, guys. You can see our brooder. I need to shut the door so that we don't have cold air coming in and draft. So it has started getting a bit windy. So because of that, we've closed the sides, the taplings on the sides. But as you can see, here we are. This is our brooding unit. Very nicely organized. Very, very nicely organized. As I mean, look at all the lines. We make sure the drinkers are in one line, as you can see them right here. And the feeders are in one line, as you can see them right here. So there's quite a lot of stuff going on inside here. We'll start with just in front of us. You can see a drinker, you can see a chick drinking water here. So these are birds that are drinking water. This water here has vitamins inside it. You know, it has vitamins and glucose because you need to make sure that you rehydrate and give the birds extra energy. So we have quite a number of them scattered along this line. Then in the middle here, we have what they call feeder plates. You know, these are plate feeders or pan feeders. People, people call them different kinds of names. But as you can see, they have our pellet feed. And this pellet feed is very nutritious for the birds. Yeah, you can use mash feed and anything, but pellet feed is very nutritious for the birds. It ensures that, you know, they catch up, they get, they pick everything up, they don't segregate in terms of feed, and they enjoy it so much. And as I'm talking, you can certainly see a lot of birds running towards me. You know, birds love moving towards people who are talking. Again, right here, you can see them drinking, taking their water. You can see someone, you know, um, serving a bit of feed right there. Get. So making sure that we have feed in the feeders, you know, we have different people all around. There are different people working inside. I think I have one person right here, there's someone right there at the end. I know there's someone right there, there's someone right here. There's about 5,000 chickens that we have inside here. Something else that we do have right here is a thermometer. We'll come towards it. Now this is the thermometer and you place it at the level of the base of the chicken house. So as you can see right here, I think you can try and read the temperature. The temperature should be about what, 34 degrees Celsius. So you want to take the temperature at the level of the birds. So as you can see it right here, the temperature is literally almost at the ground. And this is where the birds are moving. So you're trying to make sure that you get the perfect temperature for the birds. But I always tell people that you don't need to have a temperature for you to do brooding. The most important thing is to observe, you know, the way the birds are responding, yeah? The way the birds are responding, you don't want the birds to clump together. When the birds are too clumped together, that means that it's too cold. And then if the birds are, you know, moving, all moving away from the heaters, they are panting, then you know it's too hot inside here. But over here, as you can see, our birds are really comfortable. You know, the birds are doing everything, you know? It's not too loud, as you can hear. Then secondly, you can see some birds resting. For example, right here, you can see a bird resting. Then you can see some birds drinking. Like right here, you can see the birds drinking. And then here, you can see some birds feeding. So in addition to putting the feed on these plates, we try to put feed also on uh, these. So this we cut and place at the bottom because our surface area is too big. We could use brooder paper, but our surface area here is too big to use brooder paper, honestly. It's too big and becomes too expensive to use brooder paper. So what we do is we make strips like this, as you can see, and then on these strips we place the feed so that there's a bigger surface area for feed, for the birds to feed from. So as you can see, we have feed right here. You know, this is the feed and uh, the birds will, you know, just feed on it. And that's what they are doing all around, you know, if we move around right here. It increases the surface area in that we're not only putting the feed here, but we are putting the feed everywhere and giving the birds access to the feed. So these birds are very comfortable. As you can hear, it's not too loud. The other thing that I think I've missed out, you know, our heating source. So these are the stoves that we're using to heat. They are quite big. I think we have about 12 of them inside here. I counted them earlier. If they're not 12, maybe they are close to that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About nine, ten of them inside here. And they provide our heat source. I already showed you guys the charcoal and it's conducive for them. Of course, you also need light. So you can see our light source that we are using inside here. So generally, the birds are happy. They are getting everything that they need inside here and they are comfortable, very comfortable. Oh yes guys, so as you can see, that was our brooder unit just behind there. And um, this other section, the one that's empty, is exactly what we're going to be expanding into. So let's just move in. Again, we have a food dip right here. Uh, I don't think it's medicated though, since it's not being utilized. So let me show you guys around here. So right here is where we're going to expand the birds to. We're going to be expanding them into this unit. As you can see, we have litter inside here. We just got it recently. So. As you can see, our floor, it's a concrete floor, as you can see. Yeah? This is our concrete floor. You need to make sure your floor is concreted. And then that's simply a separation using iron sheet for the different unit. In between here is nothing. I think it's like a store 
we utilize it for a store. So right here, you can see the feeders are up. I mean, you clean them, but after a short time, they are dirty like this. So we need to clean them again. Just before we bring the birds in, we'll need to clean them again. And you can see the feeders and the drinkers. Yeah, you know, this is a drinker. And right here is a feeder, okay? If I come close by, on the side, you see the house on the other side is uh, a production house. We have chickens that are in production inside here. I mean, it's also really a long house. I mean, see where it's coming from and see the entire length of it and where it stops. I mean, you can't even see where it stops. That's about 200 meters for the chicken house right there. So this litter inside here is going to be spread and uh, the birds will utilize this house, yeah? The 5,000 chickens that are going to utilize this house right through to the very end. We don't need the entire house to just run the 5,000 chickens. So it's going to be very sufficient for us and the birds are going to enjoy themselves. As you can see the sides, properly aerated. I mean, I'm inside here, it's quite hot outside, but I'm inside here and it feels like I'm in SC. Good aeration. This is is exactly how we want to construct your chicken house and when we started these chicken houses we were constructing them using uh, you know poles just like this you know poles but now we replace them and we we put pillars as you can see pillars using brick so there's no need to rush you know there's no need to rush when you're starting out the most important thing is to have chickens and the chickens will get you the money to upgrade and expand the chicken houses themselves so i personally love poultry farming i mean on the farm right here we have a lot of stuff we do you know we have goats sheep cattle I think I'm going to show you guys a few of these things later on. But for me, the best thing and the thing I enjoy most is the chickens. And I personally feel like they're the most profitable and they're the most enjoyable. Tell me about your experience in the comment section below. I mean, if you're doing farming and you've been doing farming, I would love to know exactly what do you farm. For me, I farm literally all animals and I grow a few crops. But my passion and the thing that I love the most is the chickens. Of course, also because they are the most profitable. They're bringing the most money from me. Who never wants to enjoy money? So for you, what do you farm? Let me know your experience experience in the comment section below and tell me how you found it. Do you actually enjoy it? Do you like it? I would love to know. Quite curious. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell and hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video. Catch you very soon with another video. Lots of love. Bye-bye.